dairy farming was becoming a major industry in Wisconsin. And it turned out that some farmers were cheating by either adding water to their milk and getting more money per gallon, or skimming off the cream and getting the cream for themselves and selling the, the bad milk. And to make an economic system that worked, there had to be a believable method of evaluating milk. So his first job was to figure out a way to measure the butterfat content of milk. And in fact, he did so over the next few years, making for himself a world reputation and developing a technique that actually was used in both farms uh, and dairies for up to 50 years. Still works, as you'll see here. This device that I have is a Babcock centrifuge. He took advantage of the fact that fat floats to the top. And he developed a specific model for this purpose that has gradations so that one can look at the layer of fat which settles here and measure directly the amount of, of butter fat that was in the milk. This test is said to have made more farmers honest than the Bible. So I've got here uh, one bottle of 2% milk. One of skim. One of whole. Each of the bathtub bottles is exactly the same, and the pipette has a given volume, so all we need to do is fill the pipette to the line. Babcock worked for years to get the exact volume just right to make this work every time. And part of what made his test world famous and widely used was that it always worked. We'll see if it does today. Then we use concentrated sulfuric acid, which I said will cause the milk to separate into the lipid part. So we mix this carefully. Color has to do with the interaction between the protein in milk and the acid that I've just put in there. And it's now quite warm to the touch. Now we'll put these stews into the Babcock centrifuge. By this time, the lipids have been torn loose from all the rest of the components of the milk, and they would, if we left this alone, eventually float to the top. But what we do now is to speed up the process by uh, centrifugal force. Babcock designed this balance and uh, it has his name on it, but in fact, uh, Babcock made a big deal of not patenting the procedure. He wanted this to be free for everybody. I think later on in his life he regretted this somewhat because it turned out that people were making knockoffs from his centrifuge, selling them cheaper and they didn't work as well. So after a good hard spin in the centrifuge, the lipids should have floated to the top of the tubes. We'll see if they did. What we want to do now is to add a little bit of water, it's warm water, to force the floating lipid up into the neck of the bottle where we can measure its amount. Short spin. Now we can see here, the fat, fat layer at the top, it's clear compared to the darker liquid in the bottom. And from the length of that fat layer, we can determine the amount of butter fat. The layer we're looking at is this one right here. So if we read off the gradations, the whole milk is 4.8. This 2% is 2%. The skim milk isn't actually zero. The skim milk looks to be about 0.5 percent milk. Babcock would do this several times for each sample of milk. He would pass the information on to the herd manager and it was useful in two ways. It actually allowed the herd manager to figure out which of his cows or hers was giving the best milk. But of course the other thing is that Babcock's farmers could show this to the dairy who was buying their milk and they would have evidence that the milk was good.